Just like on the show tonight, brethren, as we just give a few more persons the opportunity to join the live. Just like tonight and share. God bless you. God bless you. Just like tonight and share. Share with your contacts. Amen. Share with you. Those in your contacts tonight so that others can join in the bless. To be more. everybody this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it it's another Wednesday evening when we meet on this platform for our midweek prayer service to God be the glory great things he hath done so love ye the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life's gate that all may 
entering. I want to say welcome one and all to this our prayer service. Welcome to the Agape Church of God Seventh Day with your brother and friend Otis Malcolm. Amen. We're here to worship the Lord and to seek his face in prayer. Praise God. It's another beautiful night. Praise God where we can meet in this fashion to worship and to exalt the name of the Almighty God. Isn't it, brothers and sisters, a wonderful privilege just to know that despite the experiences that we have in the day, that there is a place of quiet rest, a place where we can come and just sing the songs of Zion and listen to his words, praise God, and to talk to him in prayer. Isn't it just a wonderful assurance to know that after all the hustle and the bustle through the course of the day, you can finally, amen, commune with your brothers and sisters, praise God, even on Facebook Live to have a time of prayer, praise God, where we can listen even to the words of the Almighty God being expounded on. It's a wonderful thing, brothers and sisters. And I want us tonight not to take it for granted the opportunities that have been given to us, but to deem it an honor, amen, to be able to partake in this wonderful, praise God, service. Let me, amen, acknowledge the presence of Evangelist McClarkin, praise God, Evangelist Cecilia Witter, Evangelist Judith Bailey, praise God, all our ministers, all our missionaries, Amen. All our members, brethren from the Agape Church of God, Seventh Day. Amen. And those who are viewed from other congregations, praise God. Those of you who are our regular viewers, you are not a part of a church. I want to, amen, acknowledge your presence likewise. I want to welcome you. It's always a pleasure to have you worshiping with us. Amen. Praise God. And I hope and trust the night, amen, like every other night before, that we will just partake participate, amen, and be beneficiaries of this wonderful blessing. And as I would say, though we're not at the same geographical space or location, amen, as long as we're together in the spirit, praise God, that is great accomplishment. Praise the name of our Lord. Let me just take this time to say this is a Jasmine viewing, amen, happy birthday to you. I hope it was a wonderful and well-spent one. God bless you on this year's special day. Have yourself a wonderful evening. I hope and trust that God will bless you in all your endeavors and he will open doors for you that, amen, no adversary can close. God bless you, Sister Jasmine. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me go right into the opening of our prayer service and as you know there is always a song that is used praise God to open our service and so it's a well-known song brothers and sisters it's a well-known old song as you know I would play amen just sing along with this song and be blessed as you partake or participate in this our midweek prayer service. Let us begin. Hallelujah. Worship time, beloved. It's worship time. Come on, beloved. It's worship time. Trying to conquer my soul. Uh, do I have a witness out here tonight? The voice of my Savior, me, telling me, mm. to fight on, come on, 
the way I'm going to leave out there tonight. And he promised me to leave you me. Oh, never. promise never to leave you alone come on praise God just wave your hands where you are just lift your hands above your head where you are and say thank you Jesus for that word come on tell him thank you Jesus for that promise come on tell the Lord tonight thank you for that promise praise the name of the Lord amen the song declare no never alone he promised never to leave me and, and the thing about that promise, brother and, brothers and sisters, is that even when it seems as though he is not there, you just need to remind yourself that he's a God that cannot lie. Praise the name of the Lord. Even when it seems as if you are walking by yourself and he's nowhere to be found, you just need to remind yourself that God is a man that cannot lie, neither is he the son of man, that he should repent. Therefore, he said in his words, that his promises are yes and amen. Praise God. And so he said he will never leave nor forsake his people, his children. 
And as human beings, sometimes we find it, you know, we find our, our journey with Him so lonely and difficult. And it seems as though He has left us on our own. But this is an assurance tonight that He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So even when we see one set of footprint in the sand, it is not that He has left us. In fact, that footprint that we are seeing in the sand doesn't belong to us. Amen. The sound declared that it was the Lord at that point. It is the Lord that is carrying us when we see the one set of footprint in the sand. I want to encourage you tonight, brothers and sisters, from this song. Hold on to the words of the Almighty God. Keep faith. Be encouraged tonight. Despite what you are going through, it may seem as if you are going through it alone, but He promised never to leave you, never to leave you alone. May heaven bless you tonight. May God's face shine upon you tonight and be gracious unto you as we continue, praise God, in this our midweek prayer service. Brothers and sisters, at this time I'm going to invite us all to engage in a united prayer. Everyone, wherever you are, just stop what you're doing and let us pray. Right now, Father, we give you praise and glory. It is to you we give the honor. It is to you we give the praise for you have done so much for us. Oh, God Almighty, your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, search all over, couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. No one as great as you are. Oh, God, you filled the universe. You are so high. We can't get over you. You are so wide. We can't get around you. You are so deep. Father, we can't get under you. Father, and so therefore we come boldly to your throne this evening. Lord, where you say our wrongs can be made right and our crooked path made straight. Father, we are aware, Lord, that we are sinful and wretched. And God Almighty, according, oh God, to Psalm 24, it is only those who are of a clean hand and pure heart shall enter into your presence. And so, Heavenly Father, we submit our, 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 ourselves before you. We commit, Lord God, every part of our being into your hands this evening. Take our lives this evening, Lord, and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take our moments, Lord, and our days, and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Lord, we pray you'll forgive all our trespasses, Lord, all our shortcomings, every sins, that we have committed, Lord God, we put before you tonight. Oh God, as I say, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Doth your all the spirit control? Oh God, you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you heal your body and soul. Father, we heal our body and soul tonight to you. We say, have your way in our lives. Father, we said, wash, cleanse, purify. Purge God Almighty, deliver us from every sin, from every iniquity, every impediment, Lord God, every negative thing that can be found within us. We send us, wash us, Lord, and make us clean. Cleanse us, O oh Father, and make us white and snow. So as we enter in this, your presence on this Wednesday night in our prayer service, Lord, no sins, O oh God, will hinder us, will block us, from entering the Holy of Holies. No sin, Lord God, can prevent us from entering your presence. We pray, God Almighty, that every word, every song, every prayer, everything that is said and done in this service, my God, we pray that it will be acceptable in thy sight. Let worship, Lord, come up to you as a sweet smelling savor. My God, remove every animosity, everything that would hinder worship from coming up to you. I pray, God, that you will clear out in the name of Jesus and cause this atmosphere to be conducive to worship, Lord God, and to be conducive to sign wonders and miracles. So, Father, you can manifest yourself, oh God, through your words. Have your way, Father. We worship you, oh God, because you are, you, you are great and you do miracles so great. And there is no one less, no one like unto you. 
Be with us, Father. Give us receptive hearts. Reveal yourself to us through your words. So, God, as we worship you, heaven will come down, Father, and glory will fill our soul. Bless your people who are viewing tonight. Give them receptive hearts so as they listen to the word that will be spoken, God Almighty. Oh, Father, they will experience a transformation. God, a change will occur in their lives. Lord, they will see you, oh God, through your words. Here tonight, Father, we pray. We look to you and we say thanks for a wonderful service in your presence tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, our scripture reading comes, tonight, comes to us tonight from the book of Matthew, chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5, we'll be reading from verse number 1 to verse number 12. Matthew chapter number 5. Mm. Matthew chapter number 5. We will be reading from verse number 1 to verse number 12. I'll read and you just follow in your Bible. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he, he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted. For righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Praise God. The word of the Almighty God is before us tonight. We honor them by saying, thanks be to God. Praise God. Just mark those, just mark that spot in your Bible, that page, of that chapter in your Bible. Amen. We'll be going back to it momentarily. To hear what the Lord has to say to us through his words. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But you know, brothers and sisters, before, before we actually go into the word of the Almighty God, there is always a word, a song of meditation. Praise God. There is always a song of meditation. So while you prepare yourself for the word of the Almighty God, just listen to this song of meditation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord.
to save those who are lost. What more do you want him to do? Brothers and sisters, the reality is Christ did it all for us. He suffered and he died. Yes, he gave up his life that we might live. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. When one gives his or her life, that's all that is left. There's nothing else for them to, to give. That's all they had. And Christ gave his life so that we can live. There is nothing else that he could have given, to, given unto us. So the song is saying to us, brothers and sisters, what more do we want him to do? Praise God, when he died, he died a death that he did not deserve. He died in our place. He died that we might live. My God, I, I, I just love this song tonight, brothers and sisters. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, the, 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 the song declared, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving it. Have you ever thought about, brothers and sisters, the fact that he died for us, yet still we don't deserve the sacrifice that he made? When we look at the things that we have done, the thoughts that we have had, the places we have gone, my God, when we, when we think about all the negative, the bad things that we we, we get engaged or get involved in. We know that the sacrifice that Christ made over 2,000 years ago, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. There's a song that declares, um, it wasn't worth it. Something like that. But yeah, something like that. I'm not remembering the song to, to its, uh, you know, fully now. It wasn't easy, thanks Holy Spirit. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. Praise God. When he died, remember he was in the flesh. He was fully God, but yet fully man in the flesh. He gave his life. When you, when you read how they did to him, pray what they did to him, amen, they pierced his side. Praise God. They, 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 they nailed his hands and his feet. They gave him vinegar to drink. They placed a crown of thorn on his head. My God, they, they, they caused him, amen, to feel much pain and agony. The song was declared, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it because he died so that we might live. What a God. Brothers and sisters, what more do we want him to do let us not look for anything more from him to be grateful for but let us be more grateful to him for what he has already done for us praise God. let us go in the word of the almighty god tonight i want to reason with us on a subject on common happiness Uncommon happiness. Praise God. Uncommon happiness. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And as you know, let, let me, before I proceed, let me um, welcome those who came on after the official welcome was done. Yes? If you missed the first welcome, let me welcome you to the Agape Church of God seventh day. Amen. And the mid to this midweek prayer service. Amen. With your brother and friend Otis Malcolm. Amen. Being the presenter tonight, the person that will be sharing the word of the Almighty God. I hope that you come with a praise, come with a worship, come expecting a word from the Almighty God. Because in his presence there is fullness of joy. And that is right and there are pleasure forevermore. Praise God. Welcome again. Amen. Feel free to worship with us. We may not be in the same geographical space, 
But if you just hook up with us in the spirit, amen, we can be blessed together. Thank you, Lord. So we reason tonight, praise God, on the subject, uncommon happiness. A very a, a happiness that is very rare. It is uncommon. You don't find it everywhere. You don't find it any and anywhere. Praise God. It is very rare. Uncommon. Not common at all. Amen. Special kind of happiness. Mm, not the kind of happiness that you find when a child is born or when it's your birthday or when it's your anniversary or when you're walking on the street and find maybe a 10,000 or so. Not that kind of happiness when you hear that something good ha you know, is, going, is going to happen for you in a few days. No, not that kind of happiness. I'm, I'm talking about happiness, amen, to, to its fullness, praise God. A kind of happiness that only those who are truly connected to the Holy Spirit can actually appreciate as happiness. So we read tonight, brothers and sisters, from Matthew chapter 5, and we read from verse 1 to verse 12. Very common bit of reading, I must say. And of course, most of us have been reading from we were children until now. And uh, you may be saying, but I know that text already. But there is nothing about the word of God that is new. It's just that when you read it, God will give you a brand new revelation. Amen. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful word of life. Let me more of thy beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Praise God. And so from Matthew chapter 5, we, we refer to this portion of reading as the beatitude. Praise God. The beatitude. Amen. Where it begins by saying, And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them sin. Now this was Jesus, beloved, who, amen, as customary would teach his disciples and by extension, he would teach the people as they would flock him, they would surround him, amen, because he had very powerful and profound and provoking teaching. And so it was another day that he was surrounded by the people. He saw them coming and he also had the disciples with him. And so... I presume in my mind, I can just imagine it, imagine, it, imagine Christ, amen, because a multitude is a lot of people, a whole bunch of people. So I can just imagine Christ now wanting to teach the disciples and the multitude. He saw them coming, so he find himself on a mountain where he was above them, so he could be seen by them while teaching them. Praise God. But the, these, the, the Beatitudes are this passage that we read, brothers and sisters, that is referred to as a Beatitude, are comprised of three elements. And the three elements that it is comprised of it says, a pronouncement of blessing. Number two, a quality of life. And number three, a reason why the recipient should be considered blessed. So we're going to look at the three components tonight in the um, different verses that I'll be reading. Let me say that I may not get to the last verse. I may not even pass in my num verse number Five. That's my target tonight to try to get to verse number five. And I promise you I'll pick up um, with the other verses next Wednesday if the Lord would have it to be so. So I will be doing it in two parts tonight. Two parts. I'll be doing um, 
Uncommon Happiness Part 1 tonight and then if God would have it so the next week I'll be doing Uncommon Happiness Part 2. Praise God. And so brothers and sisters, Jesus here while he was teaching, he taught some very powerful principles. Principles that only persons who are vigilant, persons who are somewhat mature in God would understand and appreciate and actually see the blessings and the happiness that Christ is actually trying to teach in this text. Now, before we even proceed, the word <clears throat> blessed simply means to make happy. This word bless means to make happy. So when the, the word says blessed, it speaks of happiness. So if you are blessed, it is saying that you are happy. Because when one is blessed, one is eventually, uh, eventually becomes happy. So the word blessed here speaks of happiness. And in my words, I refer to this happiness as uncommon happiness. Praise the name of the Lord. And so in verse 3, after he started, he, he, he climbed the mountain and he was ready and he found himself, put himself in gear and he got ready and he started teaching. In verse 3, the first beatitude that he shared with them, he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. So let me say, let me remove the word blessed. Happy are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. What was Christ actually saying in verse 3? Christ was actually saying he was pronouncing a blessing and he was actually giving the reason why he was pronouncing that blessing. He says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, brothers and sisters, when you speak of being poor in spirit, it's the word poor speaks to lacking. You are lacking in a particular era. Are you with me tonight? The idea of God blessing the humble and resisting the, pro the, the proud can also be found in this one verse. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Because when one is poor in spirit, one is lacking Amen. where the spirit is concerned. Now, the question may be asked tonight, how can one that is poor in spirit eventually be happy? Now the principle that Christ is teaching is that when one is poor in spirit, one would recognize his or her present condition. One would see that he or she is experiencing a spiritual deficit and therefore will see the need and the necessity to cry out to the Almighty God. And Christ is saying that blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Number one, they will cry out to him. They will seek him. Because it is only when we find ourselves sometimes running low in the spirit that we tend to seek God in fasting and in prayer and through the reading of his words. And if we all can be, can be honest tonight, sometimes when we find ourselves at a good place with God, sometimes the human side of us causes us to get complacent because we, we feel like we're at a place now 
where we can just relax in God because we are above where we used to be. And so oftentimes we get relentless. So we, 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 we get, uh, we, 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 we forget our purpose. We forget, amen, the fact that we are to seek God daily. Amen. We forget, amen, the fact that as human beings, it just takes one thought for us to, amen, fall from our spiritual high right back down to, amen, ground zero. Praise God. And so, brothers and sisters, amen, as children of God, it is, praise God, always our most and a blessing when we find ourselves running low in the spirit. Because at that point in our lives, amen, we, we see the need to cry out to God. We see the need to read his words. We see the need, praise God, to seek him in prayer and fasting. We see the need to meditate upon him. Praise God, we see the need, amen, to, to launch out deeper because we are lacking in the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And secondly, brothers and sisters, amen, blessed are the um, poor in spirit, praise God, because when we are poor in spirit, we rely, amen, on God himself, praise God. And so, when we rely on God himself for our spiritual upliftment, praise God, for our spiritual renovation, amen, he promises, brothers and sisters, that if we call, he will answer. If we knock, he will open. If we seek him, we will find him. Henceforth, brothers and sisters, amen. A blessing is attached to those who are spiritually poor. My God, when one is poor, amen, one tries ways in which one can accumulate, amen, substance, one tries ways in which one can move from that, amen, poverty-stricken life, amen, one try how they can get a job and to save and to make their lives better. Brothers and sisters, so it is with when you are lacking in the spirit, when you are lacking the spirit and you are spiritually conscious, when you have that kind of God consciousness, you recognize that you are not at the best place and you need to ask God, amen, to break out a revival in your life. My God, no wonder why the, the old songwriter, I think his name, praise God, is Glenn Graham, amen, he penned these words together when he found himself, praise God, going through a spiritual deficit, praise God, he find himself, my God, he was experiencing, amen, a spiritual shortage. He put these words together. He says, Lord, my life is like a jigsaw puzzle. When the pieces are all out of place, he said, I tried my best, Lord, to put them back together. He says, my resources are empty. My, my, my storeroom is empty and my resources all gone dry. Praise God. But what he did in the second verse, he says, Lord, I notice that my account, my spiritual account with you is not balanced, which means that my soul is now standing in a rear. He says, my enemies know that I'm living in a spiritual deficit. I'm living in a spiritual shortage. I am spiritually bankrupted. My God, I'm spiritually bankrupt. Praise God. And my enemies know that I'm spiritual, spiritually bankrupt. And this is the point in our lives, brothers and sisters, that the enemy seems to want to amen, ambush us and attack us when they know that we are going through a spiritual deficit, a spiritual shortage. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When you find yourself in that spiritual dilemma, it is not always a bad thing. Because at that point in your life, you see the need to open your mouth and cry out to the Almighty God. 
It is the time when you find yourselves seeking and praying and reading the word. My God, any time, praise God, that you need to read the word and seek God's face in prayer. My God, is when you have, praise God, your spiritual shortage. I don't know about you, but in my life, I found myself on more than one occasion where I am spiritually bankrupt. I am going to a spiritual deficit. My God, my, my soul is standing in a rear. I, I am owing, I am lacking, I owe God a lot. Is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? God, amen, does, does a lot for us and we owe him. My God, we owe him in our worship. We owe him in our praise. We owe him in the way we, 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 we seek. My God, that's the time, brothers and sisters, hear me, that we need to find ourselves closest to the Almighty God when we are in a spiritual shortage. So Jesus now was teaching, brothers and sisters, that when you find yourself at such place, you are blessed. <coughs> you are blessed. You are blessed. And not just blessed, but the kingdom of God belong to you. And this is the point, this is the part rather, that makes me very, very confident and happy. Blessed are those who, blessed are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. So understand that the kingdom of the almighty God belongs even to those who are poor in spirit. Because those persons totally depend and rely on the almighty God. Hence, the kingdom of God belong to such persons. He continued in his teaching. In verse 4 he says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall <coughs> be comforted. Now, when Jesus taught this principle or this beatitude, he wasn't speaking necessarily to the mourning for a loved one or when we mourn when we lose a friend or a family member no that was the kind of mourning that Jesus <clears throat> actually taught about the mourning that he taught about here in Matthew chapter 5 is when we mourn and we lament over our spiritual shortage are you with me so so verse 4 is actually connected to verse 3 because verse 3 says blessed are the poor in spirit for there is the kingdom of heaven now when one is poor in spirit meaning lacking in the spirit the most common thing <clears throat> For one to do is to mourn over one's spiritual condition. Are you with me? So here Jesus taught the disciples and the multitude that blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. In other words, <clears throat> when you mourn, you cry and you lament over your spiritual condition. You are saying to God that God, I am not comfortable where I am. I am not satisfied with my spiritual condition. And I am crying out because I need to be closer drawn to you. I am mourning because I am ashamed of my spiritual position. Are you with me tonight? And because even one mourn and cry and lament and weep over one's spiritual condition, the word of God is saying, 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. In other words, when Christ see you crying out, amen, pining after him, reaching after him, the psalmist says, as the deer panted after the water, so my soul longed after thee. When he see you longing after him, pining after him, reaching out to him, mourning and crying over your dead spiritual condition, he will eventually send comfort to you. This is what Christ was teaching. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Brothers and sisters, my God, if you want to be comforted by the Holy Spirit, Oh God, you, you better learn how to open your mouth, amen, and prostrate before God and weep and cry over your spiritual condition because he promises that he will send comfort, he will send help. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, blessed are the they that mourn, for they shall <coughs> be comforted. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> So this word blessed as I outlined simply means to make happy. So as children of God our happiness comes in a very strange way. A very uncommon way. The happiness of the world comes when they win the, the latter, the cash pot, or the world hear that somebody that they haven't seen for a long time, a relative in the state coming down, and maybe good is coming down with them, you feel happy. And when persons send money through Western Union and say, yes, I'm going to bless you, the world, amen, that is all the world, experience their happiness praise God and when they keep parties and stuff like those those things make them happy but our happiness brothers and sisters is very much uncommon the word of God says our happiness comes when we mourn over our spiritual condition what a happiness oh the people of the world cannot see this as happiness because Oh, can one that is mourning be happy? <coughs> oh, can one that is actually lamenting be happy? This is how the Almighty God designed us to live. When we mourn and lament over our dead situation, brothers and sisters, eventually that's where our happiness comes. Eventually that's where our blessing comes. So he says, Blessed are the meek. And, 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 and this, this particular verse, brothers and sisters, sometimes bring confusion to many as maybe the full understanding of the text is not properly grasped. Yes? A lot of persons misinterpret this particular verse. And that's why I said to you earlier that I may conclude tonight on verse 5 as there are some things that I might have to unravel and share with us as verse 5 is concerned. Because it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the hurt. Now, the meek are referring to the humble. Yes, not the weak, because weakness and meekness is not weakness. Meekness is humility. Humbleness. Are you with me? And in order for you to inherit the kingdom of God, in order for you to inherit the earth, 
You've got to be meek. It is a requirement. It's the qualification that you must have. You must possess this particular fruit, this particular um Yes, it's a fruit. It's a part of the fruit of the Spirit. You must possess this quality in order for you, brothers and sisters, to inherit the kingdom of God or to inherit the earth as Matthew stated, as Jesus taught. It says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, how does the meek inherit the earth? Isn't it, isn't the meek already living in the earth? Or how does one inherit something? If it isn't an inheritance something that is handed down maybe from one generation to the other? Yes, it is. Now, how can the meek, or how will rather, the meek inherit the earth? Now, let me share with us a few Bible um, passages, a few verses that maybe will help some of us. Now, over in St. John. Four. Jump with me to St. John chapter 4. The meek shall inherit the hurt. Jump with me to St. John chapter 14 rather. St. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 brothers and sisters Jesus spoke to his disciples because they were concerned about their lives and no doubt they were worried Jesus brought encouragement and consolation to them Jesus says to them as he comforted them. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. St. John 14. He believed in God, believe also in me. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you also know. So here Jesus was comforting his disciples. Telling them that they shouldn't allow their hearts to be troubled. Because if they believe in God, they believe also in Him. Because in His Father's house are many mansions. And Jesus was saying that I'm not lying, I'm telling the truth. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I am going to prepare a place and this is where I want to get your attention. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he says, so if I go to prepare a place for you, I will be coming back to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus now was promising them he was 
he was actually comforting them that though I will be leaving, I am going to prepare a place so that the next time we meet, we don't have to part company again. We will be in the very same space together. Are you with me? So that was Jesus. And we're getting back to the meek shall inherit the herd. We're going right to that particular verse. Now, the promise was made that he's going to go and he's going to prepare a place and come back to receive them. Now, let us look at Acts chapter 1. We're looking at verse 9 to verse 11. Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 to verse 11, it says, Now when he had spoken these things, after he was through speaking to his disciples, after he was resurrected and he was about to go back to his father, he met with the disciples and was about to ascend to his father. He spoke to his disciples. Now, when he had spoken these things, <coughs> while they watched him, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will also come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Are you with me? So Jesus made a prompt, made comfort them in, in John 14, telling them that he's going to prepare a place. Now, this is the day of his departure when he will be, be ascended to his father. So as he left, they looked at him going up in the cloud and the cloud, you know, covered him. They could not see him anymore, but they were still gazing. So there were angels, the Bible said, the men in white apparel who were angels said to him, why stand ye gazing? He said, the same Jesus that you see going up he shall return in like manner, which simply means the promise that Jesus made that he's going to go and prepare the place in his father's house and return was confirmed by the angels that the same Jesus that you see going up, he shall return in like manner as Jesus promised. So we see his words being confirmed even by angels. Are you with me? So, so... I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to show you that the, the, this teaching about going to heaven um, is a myth. Heaven is for God and his angels. Are you with me? Now, let us look over in Revelation. Let us go over to Revelation chapter 21. Because Jesus promised that is going to prepare a place and he's going to come back and receive them that he and his disciples can be in that place that he has gone to prepare and the angels confirm that he is going to return in, in, in Acts chapter 1 now in Revelation chapter 21 John on the Isle of Patmos, when the Spirit of God carried him in a vision and showed him this place that Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 5, in, 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 um, in, in John 14 rather, that he's going to prepare for them. John saw it and John says, According to Revelation 21, John says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there were no more sea. 
Then I saw the holy city. He said, Then I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. John says in verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he throne said behold I make all things new and he said to me right for these words are true and faithful praise the name of the Lord so John saw that new city amen that Jesus had gone to prepare that he promised amen his disciples amen to come back and take them to so, so listen brothers and sisters let me just give you Amen. There's a, a quick description of what John saw. Amen. In the New Jerusalem. <coughs> According to verse 9. Amen. Of Revelation chapter 21. Down John says. Then one of the seven angels. Who had the seven bowls. Filled with the seven last plague. Came to me and talked with me saying. Come. I will show you the bride. The lamb wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and the twelve angels at the gate and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates of the east, three gates of the north, three gates of the south, and three gates of the west. Praise God. Now the walls of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Praise God. And he who talked with me at gold read. To measure the city, its gate and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed. 12,000 furlong. Its length, breadth and height are equal. Then he measured its wall 144 cubits. According to the measure of according to the measure of a man that is of an angel, the construction of its wall was of jasper, the city was pure gold, like clear glass, the foundation of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third child. Chalcedony, Chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth Sardonyx, Sardonyx the sixth Sardius, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Tapez, the tenth Chrysophrase, Chrysophrase the eleventh Jacinth. And the twelve amethysts, the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl. And the streets of the city was pure gold, like the transparent glass. This is just a quick description of what John saw. Praise God in the vision, amen, of the new Jerusalem that, amen, John, that, that Jesus gone to prepare Amen. For his people. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. And when you look brothers and sisters. Over. Amen. In the book of Isaiah. 
Praise God. Isaiah chapter 65. Amen. Just write down these verses I'm giving to you. And you can read them in your spare time. Amen. Isaiah chapter 65. Just work with me a little bit. Isaiah chapter 65. As I'm, I'm fighting with the fan tonight. Isaiah 65 and verse 17. It says, For behold, I create new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. He says, But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Praise the name of the Almighty God. Let me look real quick and, and first in 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3, 2 Peter 3 and verse 12 and 13. 2 Peter 3 and verse 12 and 13, it says, Yes, 2 Peter 3. It says, Oh, whoa, fun is given there. It says, Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heaven will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements with, will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness shall dwell. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, these are our supporting scriptures. Amen. Just giving, praise God, just a description or, or outlining all that will be happening in that new Jerusalem that John saw coming down from God out of heaven. But the question may be asked tonight, Bishop, how will that work out? What will the transition be like? Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, will all that come to pass, Bishop? Amen. I am I, I'm just running over in the book of First Thessalonians and the fourth chapter. First Thessalonians four. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read from verse 13 of First Thessalonians 4. I'm reading from verse 13 down to about verse 17. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ. He says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of, of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. This is how it will begin, brothers and sisters. Then, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. He says in verse 18, Therefore, comfort one another with these verses. 
Now, didn't Revelation chapter 21 says, John saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven? Yes. Praise God. This is how the transition will be made. Praise God. According to 1 Thessalonians, praise God, there is coming a day, brothers and sisters, amen, when Christ is going to put in his appearance, praise God, there will be a sound. There will be the sound of a trumpet. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible says that we should not be ignorant concerning those who die in Christ. Praise God. Because if we believe that Christ died and was risen, so we who believe in him when we die, we shall also be risen. Praise God. But the Bible says there will be a shout. Amen. The trumpet shall sound. And those who die in Christ at that point will hear the trumpet of God being, being, being blown, being shouted out. Praise God. And when the dead in Christ, amen, that are sleeping, hear the sound of the trumpet. Brothers and sisters, hear me. My God, it doesn't matter where they are buried. They will hear the trumpet of God as long as they die in Christ. They shall hear the trumpet of God when it makes that sound. It doesn't matter how many persons are buried on them. They will hear my God and they will get up. Praise God. And the Bible says, no, don't be fooled. Because those who are alive when he comes, praise God, shall not precede. In other words, they shall not go before those who die in Christ. Amen. And some of you may not understand when I said, my God, those who are alive, amen, when he comes. The Bible did say, not all will, be, will, will experience death. Praise God before he come. Amen. In, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, praise God, the apostle Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep. In other words, we will not all die. Some people will be alive when Christ comes back to this earth. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. That is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So brothers and sisters, back over in, 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 in the book of 1 Thessalonians. Praise God. The Apostle Paul says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And when they, 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 they get up from where they were buried, Praise God, they will begin to make their transition up into the cloud. Praise God, because John, he told us that he saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, which would, which would, which would actually confirm the statement I made earlier, that the heaven is not for us, it is for God and his angel. My God, the place that humans will go Praise God. It's in that city that John saw coming down from God out of heaven. So those who die in Christ shall get up and make their transition as they go up to meet Jesus Christ in that city. Amen. In the cloud. And we brothers and sisters, praise God. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Amen. Those who are alive. Praise God, after the dead in Christ is taken up, amen, and make their, transi make their transition, amen. Those who are alive now, amen, will be suddenly and quickly transformed. Praise God, I wish I'm I hope I'm helping somebody. We shall be changed, my God, and we shall meet those who die in Christ up into that new Jerusalem and the Bible said that's where we will be with him my God we shall reign with him I hope I'm helping somebody I hope I am helping somebody tonight and over in Revelation praise God chapter 20 the Bible will have us know that this 1000 period is referred to as a millennial period my God where the saints of God shall reign with Jesus Christ 
and they shall be instrumental in handing down judgment upon the ungodly. Who am I talking to? Because John said he saw thrones. Read Revelation chapter 20. John said he saw thrones, not a throne. He saw thrones, which means those, my God, who, amen, who, 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 who eventually met Christ, amen, in the here, in the new place at Jerusalem that John saw, will be rulers with him, and they too shall be seated on the thrones that John saw in the new Jerusalem. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. So the next time people tell you that you're going to heaven, understand what the Bible says. The closest you'll get to heaven is in that new Jerusalem that John saw coming down. And that John saw it coming down, but it, it is going to remain in the cloud for 1,000 years. And let me tell you something, that 1,000 years period, amen, it, it is coming before the great white throne judgment. After the great white throne judgment, brothers and sisters, the earth will be purged, the earth will be made new, and guess what happened? My God, the city that John saw coming down, the Bible, amen, if you understand the Bible in its context, the new Jerusalem, the new city that John saw coming down, amen, it will be seated upon the earth, brothers and sisters, hear me tonight. It will, not, it will not linger in the here forever. There is coming a time when the earth will be made new. My God, even in the, in the book of Revelation, John says he saw the sea. The sea was rolled away. In other words, the earth was bare because it was now, amen, preparing for that new city that John saw coming down from God out of heaven. Here it comes now. Here it comes. Here it comes. And when that new city that John saw coming down sits upon the earth, my God, who shall inherit the earth? The meek shall inherit the earth. In other words, we ain't going to know heaven. The earth will be made new when that new Jerusalem that John saw comes down. The meek shall inherit the earth. If you believe that tonight, open your mouth and shout glory. Mm. Hallelujah. If you believe that tonight, let's open your mouth and shout glory. The meek shall inherit the earth. The earth will be made perfect again. And notice that John says in the New Jerusalem, according to Revelation chapter 21, there are some things that we are accustomed to today in our in our time that we won't have again. John says, God himself shall be our God. We don't need the prime minister. We don't need his cabinet. We don't need nobody. In other words, you don't even need Bishop Malcolm because God himself shall be your God. And listen to me, that's not the only thing. The Bible says he's gonna be your he's gonna be your light. You don't need JPS. You don't need no solar system or no generator. God Himself shall be with you. He shall be your light. My God, he, the Bible said, and God shall wipe away every tears from your eyes. There shall be no more sickness, no pain, no sorrow, no more death. My God, I w I'm just waiting for the day. My God, to repeat these words that John, that, that the Apostle Paul um, um, penned in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when he looked at death and he said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? My God, when we enter that new Jerusalem, them, that John saw coming down there shall be no more sorrow there shall be no more pain there shall be no more tears my God there shall be no more death 
For the former things are passed away. The former hurt and the former heaven is passed away. And the entire world will be made new. If you believe God tonight, I want you to show glory. Thank you, Jesus. So you ain't going to know heaven, brothers and sisters. Jesus knew what he was talking about when he taught the beatitude that the meek shall inherit the hurt. In other words, the humble shall inherit the hurt. Thank you, Jesus. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I wish I could go further in Revelation chapter 20. Share with you some things that John saw that will be coming to pass. Brothers and sisters, hear me tonight. This joy, this happiness that the blessed people of God possess is an uncommon happiness. It's not about a new car or a new house. It's not about getting a lot of money. This happiness has to do with going through what we have to go through on this earth so that we can inherit the hurt when that new city, oh God, and, 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 and Jerusalem as it is now is the city of God. Now Jerusalem itself shall be seated at the very same location, brothers and sisters. I wish I had time to share with you all the Jews live that Jerusalem and even now they're trying to gather themselves back but let me tell you something there will be the, there will be what, what I refer to as the ultimate gathering when Christ shall gather all his people and Jerusalem shall no longer be Jerusalem, but it shall be, it shall be the new Jerusalem. Walls of jasper, streets of gold. Oh God Almighty, thank you Jesus. Uncommon happiness. Uncommon happiness. Uncommon happiness. So as the Apostle Paul wrote in Thessalonians, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. And sometimes we sing some song, I want to go to heaven and rest. A lot of times we sing them, but heaven is not for us. No. When God created Adam and Eve, they weren't created in heaven. God formed them from the dust of the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Love you, Lord. So the Christian happiness is very much different from the world's happiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Christian happiness comes in a weird way. Very weird. It is very rare. It's uncommon. That's why they say Christians are fools. Would I rather be a fool for God? than to be wise for anybody else. I hope I help somebody tonight. I hope I help somebody tonight. I hope I have helped somebody tonight. Oh God Almighty, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uncommon happiness. Thank you, Jesus. We're going in prayer, but let me encourage somebody tonight. Let me play something for somebody tonight. This song is for somebody. I don't know who it belongs to. I don't know who it belongs to. Send me a surplus. Yes. Of grace within my soul. And send some endurance.
I'm trying to help somebody out there tonight. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. You're out there tonight and you're not saved. You're not experiencing this uncommon happiness. You're out there tonight. You're viewing and you know if the trumpet should sound tonight, you don't have that blessed hope. I want to minister to you tonight. Ensure that your calling and election is sure. Because when that day of reckoning comes, when Brian is ministering tonight, you are going to need help. If you, are, if you don't see that friend from now, when that day comes, you are going to need that friend. And too late shall be that cry. I'm ministering to somebody tonight. And Come experience this uncommon happiness. Yes. Be a part of the meek that shall marry the hurt. Because it won't be a pretty day. Listen to what their grand has to say. You're going to need someone to help you. You're going to need. If you're not saved, I'm talking to you tonight. You're going to need someone to lead you from. Oh, that's why Jesus returned. Oh, that's why Jesus returned from the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, won't you let 
the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. After all that is said and done, brothers and sisters, let us ensure that our, we make our calling and our election sure. Praise God. I, I was ministering, amen, in part, particularly to amen, the unsaved that are viewing. Make hate while the sun shines. Because of this teaching that I did tonight, it's a reality. Amen. We may be looking at the fact that the meek shall inherit the earth, but understand that we also spoke about the trumpet of God. And can I tell you about the trumpet, the first trumpet of God? It is those who die in Christ that will hear it. Now, if the trumpet of God is sounded and you don't hear the first time, that simply means that you are in trouble with God. Because those who rise in the first resurrection over those persons, the second death have no power. That's what the Bible teaches. But if you don't rise in that first resurrection, you shall experience everlasting damnation. Being plagued in the lake of fire. That's the word of the Almighty God. When I am just minister to us, you are going to need someone to help. All of us need someone to help. But on that day of reckoning, when you hear the part from me, you are going to need someone. But it will be too late. I want to pray for those tonight who are not saved. I want to pray for the unsaved and the backsliders. Amen. I want to pray especially tonight for them. That God will save them and bring them back. And bring them to his fold. Those of you who are saved out there. You are saved and making your way to the kingdom of God. Yes, I want you to agree with me tonight. While I pray for those who need to be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your words. Thank you for your written words, your spoken words. Thank you, O oh God Almighty, for your anointing. Thank you for divine revelation. Thank you for revelatory experience. Thank you, mighty God, that you, through your divine Holy Spirit, have revealed yourself through your words. Oh God, you have taught some of us and you have reminded us some of us. Oh God Almighty, and so tonight, let not your words return to your void. But Father, I pray that they will accomplish that which they were sent to accomplish. Father, as those, your children, who view tonight, they sat on wherever they are, wherever they were. They have listened to your words. And so Father, even now I pray, God, that your divine Holy Spirit will speak to them in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you will cause them to think on those words, to think about, oh God, all that were, was read tonight from your holy scriptures. And I pray, God, that divine, oh God Almighty, transformation will come to their lives tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray that conviction will reach their hearts, cause somebody to cry out, I heal, I heal, I can't hold it no longer. Father, I'm believing it tonight for a mighty revival, that you will break out a revival in their hearts, mighty God. Help somebody that the words that they have heard tonight, Father, will take root in their hearts and bring them into a place of, of total surrender to you. Father, help somebody to cry out tonight, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his present daily life. Save tonight for to the uttermost you save. Father, to the utmost you save. And we believe in it tonight, oh God, that sinners will run to you. Backsliders, oh God, will run to you as you promised to remarry to backsliders. Father, I pray that those who are not so strong in the faith, 
will be strengthened tonight. And for those who are drifting, I pray, God, that the anchors, oh God, will be dropped tonight. Oh God, the anchor will hold and grip the solid rock. Father, in the name of Jesus, even for those who just need a spiritual renewal, spiritual revival, my God, for the, oh, those who need a double portion of your anointing, I pray, God, that it shall be so tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Father, that tonight won't be like the other nights, but Father, somebody in the name of Jesus will make, oh God, I might their calling an election sure. Somebody will call and reserve, they, they reserve their baptism. Somebody will call, my God, wanting to recommit themselves to you, Father. I declare even in this time, oh God, of global crisis, that souls will be born still for your kingdom in the name of Jesus. I'm making myself ready as I'm believing you by faith that this word, God Almighty, will not return to you void. But Father, souls will be baptized in the seas that receive the Holy Ghost. In the season, Father, I declare it now in the name of Jesus that the seed has been planted tonight. Oh God Almighty, the Apostle Paul said, Paul, what plant and the Apollos water, but the increase comes from you. Father, I'm declaring even now, I'm beseeching you, God, that there shall be, there will be an increase in the kingdom of the Almighty God. I pray that these words that were sown in the hearts and the lives and the mind of those who view tonight, my God will germinate, will take root in them and begin to bear fruit. Oh God Almighty, fruit of righteousness, fruit of holiness, God, that would want them to live right, to walk right, to talk right. Oh God Almighty, help them tonight in the name of Jesus to put aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset them and begin to run that race with patience that is set before them. Father God, I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus that souls shall be added to the body of Christ. I'm waiting, my God, for testimony. I'm waiting, God Almighty, for those who are being washed even now because of your anointing and your words. And I believe in you, Father, oh God Almighty, that your church Father will be will be established. My God, your kingdom will be established, and souls will be added unto the church and to the kingdom of God. Bless and sanctify tonight. Touch those who are sick, heal them tonight. Father, those who are who are broken hearts, I pray, Father, you will touch them likewise. Whatever needs they have, whatever circumstances they face. I pray, God, that you will minister to their different needs according to how you know how to do it. Because we know, Father, that it is no secret what you can do, O oh God, for what you've done for others, you can do it for your people. Have your way tonight, Father, we pray. We give her the praise, we give her the glory, and we give her the honor. We thank you for battles fought, for victories won. We thank you for that which you have already done, for that which you are doing now, Father, for that which you are about to do. We give you praise in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are great. You are high and lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God be the glory, great things he hath done. So love in the world that, is, that he gave us his son, who willed his life and atonement for sin, and the hope and the life's gate that all may go in. Tonight I want to say, God bless you all, brothers and sisters, for all those who took the time to view and to participate in this over midweek prayer. I trust that you are all blessed and that you have received from the hands of God. Amen. I hope that your hearts are ministered to. 
And I hope that you have gathered strength, amen, to carry you through the course of the rest of this week. Amen. Remember to continue to be powerful, continue to be watchful, and uh, as the Prime Minister would say, amen, this con and, 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 and the, the health officer, of the minister would say this, continue to maintain social distancing as much as you possibly can, continue to wash your hands, sanitize your hands, amen, and take care of your own self. are responsible for your own health. Praise God. Let's be safe, brothers and sisters. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord, but Jesus love you best. May you be richly blessed tonight. May the presence of God be with you. Even to the night watch, may the presence of God be with you. May you experience visions and dreams. Amen. May the older one experience uh, dreams and the youth experience visions. Amen. May the, the sons and daughters prophesy praise God according to the word of the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his corners upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Both now and forevermore. God bless you tonight, brothers and sisters. I won't leave you high and dry tonight. I will Amen. Treat you good tonight. Last week I was overwhelmed, amen, by the bad news. And I, I ran away last week without even giving you a song as I normally would. But praise God. I'll be blessing you tonight. Don't worry. Amen. I'll be blessing you. I'll be blessing you tonight. I'm looking for something for your souls. Yes. I'm looking for something. That will bless your soul. Amen. I played this one last week. And it was a blessing. Very old. Yes. And I know it will bless you this week likewise. You need no other neighbor like but this one. This is the neighbor that you need. God bless you. Be blessed tonight. Sing along. Water your soul.
Reverend Tom in Bannister, we want to go to have prayer there about 5 o'clock. As you know, there is an 8 o'clock curfew, so we want to go as early as 5 o'clock so we can get back home on time, all right? So please, for those who are interested in going with us, um, let us make some arrangement tomorrow. So that we can go by and have prayer with the family. Give them some strength, alright? Please remember to call. Reserve your space for service on Sabbath. God bless you. I see somebody asking for the benediction, but it was already pronounced. So God bless you all. Have yourselves wonderful night. God bless you, Mr. Malcolm. I see you up there. God bless you. God bless you. Have yourselves a wonderful night. I love you all. In Jesus' name.